In this video, I'm gonna show you how to finish wiring up this garage as far as installing the receptacles indoor, installing the outdoor receptacles, installing the indoor lighting, the outdoor lighting, installing the bathroom fan trim, and installing a outdoor fan. And if you're new to this channel, my name's Josh. The channel's all about DIY to save a ton of money. So be sure to subscribe, ring that bell so you get a notification every time I release a new video, and hammer that like button for me. That's all I ask for in turn for making this video. So we got a lot of information that we're going to go over today, so let's get started. Before making any electrical connections, I'm first going to verify that the power is off to the circuit in which I'm working on. I'm first going to come over here to the panel box, locate the breaker that is powering the circuit in which I'm going to be working on, and check to make sure the breaker is off. And then once I get to the receptacle or the light that I'm working on, I'm gonna verify that the power is off again, and I'm gonna show you how to do that. But right now, the only two breakers that are on is one powering my mini split and one powering a outlet in which I can have power out here. Whenever I have a significant amount of receptacles to do, like in a new construction garage or house, I like to keep my tool belt on with my tools on my right side. So I got my impact driver for driving the long screws into the electrical box. I got my hand screwdriver made by Klein that's used to tighten up the terminals on the receptacles. And I got my voltage tester to test the first outlet on the circuit. And then I have my receptacles and receptacle covers here on my left side. So I got a pouch full of 20 receptacles. And then I got my covers for the receptacles. And just a little note, these are gonna be installed on a 20 amp circuit. And these are 15 amp outlets or receptacles. And the reason why I can install 15 amp on this 20 amp circuit is because I have multiple receptacles going on this circuit. Now, if this was a dedicated 20 amp circuit and there's only one outlet on it, this would have to be a 20 amp receptacle, just so you know. So that's how in my area I can install the 15 amp receptacles on a 20 amp circuit. Another good tip is to use a drywall bucket or short chair to go around with you to act as a seat so you can work comfortably on the receptacles. I'm first going to expose the wire here and I'm gonna use my non-contact voltage tester to test to make sure there's no current going through this black wire. This is the hot wire. So we're just gonna to touch it like so. And if it doesn't beep, it means the power should be off and we already checked with the breaker then it should be off. And the white will not detect any current. So you don't wanna use the non-contact there just right here on these blacks. And it's not beeping, so we're good to go. So now with that being off, I'm going to pull the wires out and separate the black and the white wires here so we can easily organize this. To explain the connections, this is going to be a pass-through connection, meaning the current's gonna pass through this to continue the current on the circuit. So the power is going to come in and out through the device. Now, if all of these were pigtailed, and I'll show you that here in a minute, if all these were pigtailed, we'd have current flowing through the circuit without going through this outlet. So because of that, we have to make sure we connect all these wires here, of course. And these are the silver terminals, which are for the white wires. And then the gold terminals are for the black wires or the hot wires. And then we got the ground wire here that goes to the green ground screw or green terminal. And that is just the terminology here. And just so you know, both of these are considered conductors, but these are the ones that are hot and this is the neutral. So first thing I'm gonna do is make my connection to the green ground terminal. In order to do so, I'm going to use my square drive. As you can see, the square drives are what screws the screw in on the terminals. And whenever you hook these wires onto a terminal, make sure it loops around in an order in which when you tighten this down, it pulls the wire towards the outlet or receptacle. So in order to do so, we're just going to hook it around like so. And then whenever we tighten this down, it's going to pull towards the outlet. And I always make my connections with a screwdriver versus a driver or drill because this way I can torque down the outlet terminals correctly. All right, so that's a nice solid connection there. Now I simply gotta make the connections that I described to you earlier. And just so you know, the back of this receptacle does have 
stab connections, but because I like the loop connection better onto the terminal, I don't use those. I think this is a much better connection using these terminals. Now we're gonna hook the black wires to the gold screws. And now the white wires to the silver screws. And it's really important to make sure these are really tight because you don't want arcing. If these are loose, it can, can cause arcing, which is really dangerous, so we don't want that. So make sure we tighten these down really well. Now that we've made all of our connections, we simply fold the wires neatly back into the electrical box, like so. And as you can see, this screw is gonna line up with the screw hole on the electrical box, and that's what tightens the receptacle down to the box. And this is where I will use a driver to do this work. And as I tighten these down, I'm gonna make sure that we are going square with the wall. And that's snug down really well. And now we're going to install the cover. The cover is going to get placed right over the outlet like so. And now with this Klein screwdriver, it's really nice. We can just pull this out and we can switch over to another bit. And this is our flathead. And also there's bits with inside bits here. So it's pretty nice and handy. So now we just tighten that up. And it's always nice to end to where the screw is facing vertically. And that looks really good and that's all there is to installing the receptacles on the pass-through connection. Here's the electrical box that I pigtailed in the last video where I wired this up. And as you can see, we only have one black, one white, and one ground wire. And that's because the connections are actually made back here where I quote unquote pigtailed the electrical together. So with that being said, we simply make our connections just like we did with the pass-through method, other than we just have one black, one white, and then one ground. So we're just gonna make those connections just like we did on the last one. In this one, I do tighten down, even though there's no wire on the terminal, it's best that these do not protrude for no reason because they will have power going through them still. So we're gonna do that. And just so you know, now that we're talking about it, let's say you wanted power to this top outlet and not the bottom. If you remove this tab here, it separates the connection between these two terminals and then you can just have power going to one or the other. So that's something to keep in mind if you wish to do so. I can't think of a reason to do that, but just so you know. Just to make things clear, you would have to remove that tab off the left and right side of that receptacle in order to separate the top and bottom outlet. And that's all there is to making the wire connections. And now we're gonna place that back into the box. As far as this hole where the ground goes, it can be up or down. There's really no code in my area to indicate one way or the other, but I typically just put it down. These are tamper resistant, meaning there's a little piece of plastic covering these holes here. And it's for in a house so a toddler doesn't put a fork or something in here and get shocked. But I like to put these in a shop as well, just so dust doesn't get back into these holes. Now that you know how to make the connections for these receptacles, I'm going to time lapse the rest of these connections. Here is the 50 amp receptacle that I wired in the previous video. If you want to check out that video, I'll put a video link top right hand corner of the screen and you'll see where I installed this 50 amp receptacle.
If you watch my how to wire a garage video where I rough wired this switch box to where I have a receptacle and a switch in a two gang box, and this is going to be the final hookup here. And just as a reminder, I have a receptacle on this side and then a switch here. And the switch is going up to this wire that's going to be for under cabinet lighting once I get that done. So that's why the switch is here to power that. So I'm going to show you how I'm going to make my connections. And just so you know, this is an ethernet cable that is going to be for my router modem. So I just want to let you know what that was, but I'm going to pull all the wires out that I have tied together in here. So I'm first going to separate my grounds from my whites and blacks, just like the receptacles that we did earlier. And when I rough wired this, I put a piece of casing on that labeled where what was going. So this says cabinet, so I know that is heading up for the under cabinet lighting. So that's one leg to it. And then we got our white, which is going to be for our receptacle. And then we got a ground, which is going to be for a receptacle. And then we got the power coming in here for the switch. And then we got a power coming over here for the receptacle. So right here is the way it's going to be separated. And now I just got to make my connections. Here's the switch I'm going to install. It's just a standard rocker switch. So just like the receptacles, we're going to start by connecting the ground wire to the ground terminal first. And this is just a standard single pole switch, by the way, which I assumed you already realized that. And now I'm just going to take the power on one of the gold terminals. It doesn't matter which. And this switch looks like it's more designed for these to go in straight and then it's going to tighten down around the wire. So I'm going to straighten out these hooks here to go straight into the switch. And according to the strip gauge located on the switch, I need to trim a little bit off here as well. So I'm going to slide the wires into these terminals and tighten them down. Place it into the switch like so. Then we're just going to snug that up really well. And I'm going to land the other one into this terminal. When I say the other black wire, that's the wire that's going up to the light. So the two wires connected here is the black power coming in and then the black wire going up to the light. And again, torque these down really well. I'm now going to hook my receptacle up onto this side. And again, it's just going to connect with these wires just like we connected the receptacles earlier. I'm now going to place those back into the two gang box. Before I snug this down really well, I'm first going to take my cover and just kind of lay it to make sure it's sitting where it should be. Go ahead and snug this one down. Now I'm going to tighten this up some. Now that everything's lined up well, I'm going to tighten this down. And then tighten up the screws. And that's all there is to the final wiring of an outlet and a switch in the same two gang box. Now that I got all the receptacles hooked up, I'm going to come over here to the panel box and kick the breakers on to those circuits. And I'm also going to take my outlet tester. This is going to let me know if the receptacles are hooked up correctly or not. So I'm going to test each one that I make connections on. If you want to purchase this, I'll put a link in the description below so you can make that purchase or check these products out that I've been using in this video for yourself. All right, so now I'm going to kick on the breakers that's powering the circuits. All right. Let's go do some testing. In order to use this tester, we simply just plug it into the receptacle. And then we're gonna have colored lights here that's gonna indicate a code that corresponds with this chart. So as you can see, the two yellow lights indicate that it's correct wiring. Now here's the other codes for any issues that you may find, but we wanna make sure we get correct wiring 
on all of the receptacles that we installed. So I'm just gonna check them all and make sure we're good to go. I'm now gonna show you how to hook up a three-way switch. I have a three-way switch here that's powering the lights up above for the stairwell and upstairs. Then I got a switch at the top of the steps to turn them off and on. So with that being said, I wanna show you the difference between a single pole and a three-way switch. This is a single pole that we installed earlier. So I just wanna show you the key differences. When looking at the single pole and a three-way switch, they look identical from the outside, but when you flip them around, you can see there is a major difference. Right here is the single pole. If we take a look where the black wires connect, one going to the light and the power, whenever you hit the switch, it's going to bridge these together inside the switch, and that's what's going to power the light on and off. And then if we take a look at the three-way switch, as you can see, we have this black screw, also known as the common terminal here. And this common terminal is where the hot is going to be located or the black, which ends up being the power wire coming in. And then you have your traveler terminals here. And the traveler terminals is what's going to make your connection be able to turn the switch off and on to the light at two different locations. So that's the biggest difference here if you take a look at the back of these. I made a very detailed video on how to wire a three-way switch. If you wanna check out that video, check out the video link top right-hand corner of the screen. And I'll walk you step-by-step -step how to rough wire and make your connections for a three-way switch. So now I'm gonna go ahead and make my connections here for this three-way switch. And clearly you would make sure the breaker is turned off and verify that the power is off to the circuit before working on it. In order to make the connections for this three-way switch, I must identify the wires coming into this box. This is the black wire that's bringing the power into the box, and this is the ground, and then these are my two traveler wires. So these are going up to the other switch box as well. So this is going to be placed into the terminal with the black screw, also known as the common, and then I'm going to hook the red wire to this gold screw that's above the common, and then on the other side, I'm gonna hook the black traveler wire to this gold screw. And then the ground obviously goes through the green. So I just wanted to explain how I'm gonna make this connection. All right, now that I got all my connections made and a quick recap, the black wire that's coming in is the power going to the common terminal. And then I got my red traveler right above that. And then I got the black traveler on the other side opposing the red wire. So that's how you make the connections for a three-way switch. Now I'm gonna place this into the switch box. I'm now gonna show you how to make the connections for the other switch. Here is the other switch on the three-way switch. So if we take a look, I labeled this one light when I rough wired this. So we know this black wire is going up to the light and that's gonna be for the common terminal. We got our ground here. Then here are our two travelers and you hook these up to the same locations. So a quick recap, the black is going to the common. Then this gold terminal is going to be for the red wire. And then this gold terminal on the other side is going to be for the black wire, which is the traveler and the reds, the traveler as well. So I'm just gonna make these connections. Just so you're aware, there are several ways to wire a three-way switch. This method is the one that I find to be the least complicated, so I use it often. All right, now we just slide that right back into the box. And that's all there is to hooking up a three-way switch. I'm now gonna connect the switches to this three-gang box. Let me explain to you what I have here. I got the three powers coming in for each switch right here. Then I got the three grounds for each switch. And then this is each wire going up to each light. This is for the patio floodlight. This is for the gable floodlight. I labeled all these as I wired this. And this one is for the back floodlight of the outdoor kitchen. So I'm gonna make my connections to the three single pole switches. So just to reiterate, our ground goes to the green screw. The black, one of the black powers goes here. And then the wire that's going up to the light goes here. So. That's all there is to make connections, so I'm just gonna time lapse all these connections. I'm now here in the bathroom. This is a two gang box. I have my fan and my light coming into here. 
So we got our fan black wire. The black wire going up to the light is here. And yes, they are both labeled. And then I got my powers here and then my two grounds. So I'm just gonna make my connections. This four gang box is going to house my three-way for the garage lights one, three-way for the garage lights two, my outdoor lights, and then my outdoor ceiling fan. So I have a three wire coming in for the first three-way switch. Then I got another three wire coming in for the second three-way switch. And then I got my grounds for this circuit. And then this circuit over here, I got my two grounds for these two switches. I got the powers and then I got where each one of the black wires are going up to. So my powers are actually right here and the light and fan is right here for the single pole switches, then the three-way switches. So I'm just gonna make my connections. Now here at the second four gang box and this is where the three-way switches will land for the garage lights. So our first switch which is going to be the one used the most are our light receptacles that's up in the ceiling for the LED shop lights. So this is all going to be on one switch. So that's three-way one then three-way two the travelers are here. Then this is going to be for the garage light sockets that's the circle boxes. Then here's the ground that goes with that. And then over here on our other circuit, we got the gable floodlight. Then here's the power for it and the ground. Then over here, we got our back floodlight and then here's the power and the ground for it. So that's how this is gonna be set up. Now I'm just gonna make my connections. Now I'm going to finish installing the fan that we wired up in our how to wire a garage video. To finish this off I'm simply going to take the fan assembly and it's going to go into the housing as you can see these line up with these holes here and then we're just going to clip it into place. Now that that's clipped into place I'm going to take my needle nose and hold this housing on this side because it will want to push up on me. So I'm just going to grab this first, then just kind of hold down and plug it in to this little receptacle. I'm now going to install the cover and it's similar to the recessed lights. We got these little metal brackets that's going to clip into place going into these slots. And that's all there is to finishing up the bathroom fan. For all the round electrical boxes, I'm just going to place covers over them for now. And I'm going to tie together the black and white wires using these Wago liver nuts. These are the 221s and these are very nice because if you push pull them open your wire will actually go down in here and then you just use the lever to clamp it shut and then it locks the wire into here. And the reason why I'm going to tie all my blacks and whites together is so when I jump out of a round box, I'll have power there in order to power a light onto a switch. And then specifically, I want to put a light over my workbench. So I'm going to take the cover off when I get to that point and place the light using that. But for now, I'm going to tie all the wires together using these Wagos. And if you want to check these out, I'll put a link in the description below. I love these things. They're great. And another great thing is whenever you go to use that round electrical box, you simply just open the lever up, pull your wire out, then hook your light up, and it doesn't damage your wires or anything like that. So very nice device to use. In order to use this, we simply, like I mentioned earlier, just open up the levers or the levers, either term. So then we're gonna slide our wire right into the nut and then we're gonna close it shut. And then in this case, we're gonna tie 
these black wires together. So I'm going to place the other one in the here and then shut it and then do the same to the white wires. So more or less what this does is bypasses this whole round electrical box and continues the power to wherever we need it. Now we got a nice solid connection. I'm going to place these right up into the box. And then I'm going to place the cover right over that. And now if I need to jump a light out of here eventually, I can. The power's right there, ready to go. I'm now going to show you how to install the recessed lights and I always buy these recessed lights because I always install the halo housings and these halo lights that come as the trim kits for the actual light itself is very nice and very easy to install. One thing I really like about these is one you get them in a value pack and since I build structures these are definitely the way to go. And if you take a look at the back, we can select what Calvin light we want for brightness. I usually do the 5000K for the daylight look, or you can go down to more of a yellow look. So whichever one you want to do, there's that option. And another great thing is these will plug right into the recessed light housings like I explained, but there are some older model recessed light housings that require this to be screwed into just like a regular light bulb and then it'll give you the little dongle that you can plug your light into. So it comes with these as well in this kit. If you wanna check these out, I'll put a link in the description below so you can check them out for yourself. But I'm gonna show you just how easy it is to install these trim kits. Another thing about these LED lights, it does have a gasket here, so it makes more of a seal whenever it's installed in the ceiling. And then these are the metal pieces that you squeeze together that's gonna to hook up into the light housing. And I'll show you that here in just a moment, but you'll squeeze these together then push them up, then release and it pulls it up into the housing. Here's the recessed light housing made by Halo that has the plug here in the middle that protects the socket from getting paint in it if you're gonna be painting. So I'm gonna take that out and that's why it's white on the inside of this because I painted this with a paint sprayer. And then we're just gonna take this dongle and we're gonna turn it right into that light socket like so just as if you're screwing in a light bulb. Now we have the connector in order to make the connection to the recessed light trim kit. And this is gonna plug right onto this. So we're gonna go ahead and make that connection. So you hear it snap into place. And make sure you have the right color that you want for lighting. Again, I got the 5000K. Now all I gotta do is squeeze together the metal on the sides of the light like so, and it's gonna go right up into these brackets to hold it into place. Now that that's holding it, we're just gonna push it right up in, and boom. And as you can see, that's how easy it is to install the halo lights in the housings with the correct kit. Here's the housing that has the connector built into it already. As you can see, there's no light socket above, and this is even easier we simply just clip it in and then install it just like we did the one where we had to install this light socket dongle first. Installation takes no time. For the LED shop lights, I installed four receptacles going across the side of the garage to give me four strips of the LED shop lights. And these are on a three-way switch. So I have a switch down here to my right side, then a switch over here to my other entry door. So these can be operated just like the other lights in this shop. So with that being said, I'm gonna install these receptacles into the electrical boxes.
Now that all the inside receptacles are done, I'm now going to show you how to wire up an outdoor receptacle. If you remember from my siding video, this is how I trimmed out the outside and placed the electrical box in the siding. If you want to check out the video, check out the video link top right hand corner of the screen. And I'll show you how I installed all this for the outlets. So first thing I need to do is prepare the in use cover. So let's get started. When it comes to installing the outside receptacles, I have a couple things about the codes here that I'd like to go over. For one, the receptacle that I'm using has to be weather resistant. And in this case, it's tamper resistant and weather resistant. That's what the WR stands for. And also I need to install what's called a in use weatherproof cover. So this by code has to be installed over the outlet. So with that being said, I'm going to prepare this to house this receptacle. As you can see here, it comes with many face covers here. So the only one I need is this one. And I don't need these screws or this. And this is going to go over the receptacle like so. And in order to place this in here, I need to pop out this back cover. So I'm just going to push it out like that. And then we're just going to take this part and it's going to place right in the back of it coming from the back side. It's going to snap into place. Just like that. So now when we install this, it's going to look like that after it's complete. And also this has to be GFI protected. And if you remember my sub panel video, if you haven't seen that, check out the video link top right hand corner of the screen. But that's where I put a GFI breaker to protect all my receptacle. So this will be protected via GFI, but not with the actual receptacle itself. That outdoor receptacle is on this circuit and this circuit is on this GFI breaker. And this breaker will protect it just like a GFI outlet would. So this is protecting every outlet on that circuit with GFI. So if you don't have a breaker like this, you would have to use a GFI receptacle to have it outside. But that's why the actual outlet is not GFI itself, but it is protected on the circuit with this breaker. In order to prepare this wire, I'm first going to strip off the sheathing with a utility knife from the outside of it. I'm then going to take my wire strippers and strip off just a little over a half inch or so of the sheathing. And this is a 12 wire, so I'm using the number 12 on the wire strippers. I'm then going to take my needle nose and give this a nice hook on the ends of the wires. I'm now going to connect this receptacle to these wires just like we did the ones on the inside. I'm now going to remove the screws out of this receptacle because I'm going to use these to go through the cover to hold it into place. I'm now going to fold these wires back into this box. So I'm just going to get that lined up with the screw holes to hold everything together. I'm now going to take the screws that we removed from this receptacle and place it through the hole here in the back of this weatherproof box and then place it right through this hole and then into the hole of the electrical box. Got that one started, now I'm going to get the bottom one started. And now that we have it on here, we just tighten up the screws and then that foam gasket's going to seal the water from coming in the back of this cover. And as you can see, you got a nice sturdy cover on here. Everything looks really nice and clean. And then to make this in use, just pull this tab out and then a wire or a cord can come through, plug in while the cover is shut to help keep everything powered while protecting it from the weather. If you're wondering why there are so many outdoor receptacles in this area, that's because this is where my outdoor kitchen is going, so be sure to stay tuned for that video. I'm now going to show you how I'm going to install these LED floodlights 
And I found a really good price on these. They came in a two pack for around $60, so it averaged about $30 a light. I needed six around this whole building, so I wanted to do something affordable. So I found these on Amazon. I'll put a link in the description below if you want to check them out. But I'm going to show you the parts that they came with and what parts I'll need for this installation. We first got the bracket that's going to be used to mount to the side of the building. And then we got a gasket that's going to go around the outside of the light. It's going to go right around this edge. You only use the very edge of the gasket to seal it. And then after that, we got the wire nuts here out of this whole pack of screws and everything. I'm just going to use the wire nuts out of this. And then we got the mounting screws. I'm going to use this long screw to go through the center of the light to mount it. And then there's a little rubber gasket that's going to go on the end of that screw. And then I'm just going to use these two little screws here to mount this bracket. Other than that, I don't need any more of the screws out of here. So I'm going to fish that onto the end of that screw. Ultimately, that's the only parts that I need out of that whole package. In order to install the gasket, all we got to do is simply peel off this tape. And it's just going to stick right to the back of the light. And it's going to stick right to it like so. And that's all there is to installing the gasket. And I've installed a lot of lights outside and I've never came across a light that has a gasket like this. So that's a little bit unique, but it kind of makes sense. This is where I'm going to install the floodlight. And when I installed this vinyl siding, that's when I installed the J block and everything. If you want to see that video, check out video link top right hand corner of the screen. I show you step by step how to install this electrical box. So first thing, I'm going to take off this cover. I'm now going to install the mounting bracket to where the ground screw is placed out. And then I'm going to place it to where the wires are coming right through the side of the bracket. Then we're going to use the smaller screws that came with the kit and then screw them into the mounting holes. I'm now going to wrap the ground wire around the ground screw in a fashion in which it'll tighten as I screw it down. I'm now going to place the cover back over all of that. I'm now going to take the floodlight and begin with the green wire, connecting it to the right wires using the wire nuts. So the green goes to the bare copper, the black goes to the black, and then the white goes to the white. Place the wires into the junction box. It's also a good idea to wrap your wire nuts with electrical tape because this is an exterior installation, just so you know. I'm now going to take the mounting screw that has the rubber washer on the end or gasket and we're going to place the light right over all the wiring. Then we're just going to place the screw right in this center hole and then tighten that up. Now that that's snugged up really good, we can kind of adjust it to fine tune the angle. All right, that looks good. The gasket is sealed. In order to adjust this tilt, all we gotta do is loosen up this screw here on the side and then adjust it to whatever angle we want it. We'll try it right there. And then the cool thing about these, they're also adjustable here. We can angle those out and then you can twist them whichever way you want as far as sloping up or whatnot or sloping down. Very universal light for the money. I really like it. Final touch is to remove this plastic. Now we can kick the breaker on and see if it works. And now we got the lights powered on, they look really good. The brightness of these LEDs were simply incredible. As you can see, they lit up the outside of the building very nice. So here was the first one, then if we walk over to the second one, it really lit up this 64 foot building. I'm now going to install the ceiling fan that's going to be for the outdoor kitchen. Here's the ceiling fan that I'm going to be installing. It's a 72 inch, it's outdoor rated, 
and it was only about $220 on Amazon at the time of recording this video, which is a steal for a 72 inch fan with those features. It also has a remote and this different selection of brightness for the LED lights. So that's gonna be great. So if you need to set it to a certain brightness for your outdoor space or your indoor space, you have that option. So first thing I like to do is unbox my ceiling fans before I start the installation, because I wanna see everything that I got before I get started. Here is everything that came in the box. We got our light in the housing. We got our light cover that's sitting under here. We got our fan motor, the brackets that hold the fan blades. We got our cover that goes right over this part of the fan motor. We got our bracket that's going to be used to mount to the ceiling. And I'll show that first thing. And then with that, we got our cover for the bracket. And over here, we got two different down rods. This is a 12 inch, this is a six inch. For this installation, I'm gonna be using a six inch. So I'll just hold on to that for later. If I need it for another fan, got our remote, our remote sensor. And then here's the hardware to connect the fan blades and the wire nuts to connect the wiring. So we're gonna go ahead and install all of this. And clearly you would make sure the breaker is turned off and verify that the power is off to the circuit before working on it. First going to strip the sheathing off of this wire and strip the casing off the end so we can make our connections. I'm now going to take out these lag bolts that came with this saddle box. And if you remember my last video of installing a saddle box, it just has a screw holding it to a wood stud here. So I'm just going to take this all off. I'm now going to take the mounting bracket and place it right here so it lines up with these screw holes and then take the lag bolts that take a quarter inch driver to drive into the wood that's up above. The bracket's nice and solid. I'm now gonna finish stripping these wires. I'm now gonna prepare the ceiling fan motor. I'm just going to take this and flip it upright like so. And I'm now going to take this cover and the six inch down rod. I'm gonna make the connection to the fan motor. I'm now gonna take this pin out of here. And this says to motor, so this is gonna to go towards the motor. And we need to take our covers and place it on like so, going up. And then we gotta take this one, and it's gonna face down like so. And we're gonna slide this up all the way. Then we're gonna fish my wires in through this. I'm now gonna take the pin we removed and place it through the down rod. Once that's through, we take the pin that came out of it originally and we're gonna place that right back in there. And then we're gonna tighten up these two screws here to secure the rod. Now I'm gonna slide that down over all of that. Now we're ready to strip these wires here I'm now gonna make the connections for the remote control sensor. And as you can see, these colors will match up with these colors here to control the fans and lights. And then once we get up there, the power comes in here to power the device. So I'm gonna go ahead and tie all this together. In order to make the wire nut connections, I am gonna use electrical tape. This is standard electrical tape. It just happens to be yellow, but we're going to twist our wires together first and then connect it that way. So in order to do so, again, color to the same color, and then we're gonna twist them together first like so. And then I'm gonna take a wire nut after that, and we're going to twist it together with it as well. And then after that, we're simply going to take electrical tape to wrap around the connection. Now we do that with the rest of these wires. We now can go hang this onto the bracket. I'm just going to take this and hang it right onto the circular part of the bracket. Just slides right in from this side. Then we're going to rotate it till it goes down into the slots. 
Now I'm just going to take this metal wire that's not for electrical connections. I'm just going to tie it right here around the side of this bracket just for a little extra security. Actually, don't see many fans with this one here, so I'm just going to use it while I have it. I'm now going to slide the receiver for the remote into the top of this bracket. All right, I had to unplug the wires from the sensor to get that in there. Now I'm just gonna plug the wires back in. I'm now I'm gonna push the rest of the wires up into the electrical box. Now on this side, we're gonna connect our green to our bare copper ground and this green wire as well together. And then our whites to the white and the black wire to the black wire. I now loosened up the screws here at the bottom of the mount. I'm going to slide the cover right over that. Put that twisted into place, I'm going to re-tighten up those screws. And that's all there is to mounting the motor to the ceiling. Now we've got to put the blades on. I'm now going to put together the fan blades. This is the bracket that's going to hold the fan blade and it says this side up as you can see. And then on this side of the blade, it says the same thing, this side up. So we want to make sure we follow the directions and place it that side up. And now we're going to make our connection from the bracket to the fan blade. So I'm just going to take the blade and place it on top of the bracket and line up the three holes. So the screw goes down through from the bottom up. Then I'll flip it over. And then we're going to do a washer. Then the spring washer and then the little nut and for now i'm just going to hand tighten that on now i'm going to do the remaining holes here now in order to tighten these up i'm just going to take a pair of pliers grab this so it doesn't slide and then take my impact driver with the number two bit and just tighten these down you don't want to tighten the heck out of them just snug them up really well and that's all there is to making the connection. Now I gotta do that with all the fan blades. In order to install the blade onto the fan, there's three screws at the top here where each fan blade goes. And there is a lock washer as well, or a spring washer. So we're gonna remove the three screws, place the fan blade in replacement of where the screws were, and then put the screws back into the holes in which they came out of with the spring washer. Now I'm gonna place the fan blade down to where the nice side's facing down and the side that says face up is facing up. After you attach the fan blade, this is what it will look like from above. We're now going to repeat that process for all the fan blades. I'm now going to install the light in the housing. The first thing I need to do is remove one of these three screws and then just loosen up the other two. I'm now going to take this housing and place it to where the two screws we loosened up goes through these two holes and the one we took out goes here. And then we're gonna fish our wire through as well. We're gonna twist it into place and then place the screw that we took out back into the hole. And now the same idea for the housing, take out one of the screws and just loosen up two. Now we're gonna take our LED light plug it in and then place it on those screws. And plug it in where the blue goes to the blue and the white goes to the white. Now we're gonna install the light. And now place the screw back in the hole and tighten up the other two screws. Now I'm just gonna take the cover and place it right up over the light and twist it into place. Now we're gonna turn the breaker on and see if the fan works. I now have the breaker on and turn the switch on to the light for power. Now I'm going to use the remote to control it. So I'm gonna hit, let's say speed fan one. Let's see if that works. 
All right, looks like it's starting to turn now. All right, that looks like it's working. So now let's hit speed fan six. Awesome, sounds like a helicopter. It's definitely throwing some air. All right, let's go back to fan speed three. All right, very responsive. Now I'm going to try the light. I'm going to hit the light icon. Looks like the light works. And now I'm going to change the color. There's yellow, a little bit cooler, a little cooler. Very cool, very cool. Back to yellow. So there are many different brightnesses here you can choose from. So that is as cool as it gets. Right there is like the daylight. So it works great. As far as the features to this remote, we got our summer and winter to reverse the direction of the fan blades. And then we got our fan speeds. And then this is the power button here, the power of the fan off and on. Then you can turn this to one hour, four hour, and eight hour for duration in which you want it to be set. Then it'll turn off automatically. Turn the light off and on with this button. Then we got this mode here. This is breeze mode. This is where the fan automatically cycles to six different speeds. And then we got this mode here, which is going to be for vacation mode where the light will switch on for five minutes every two hours as if somebody was home. So that's pretty cool too. Now that I have all the recessed lights and all the wiring done in the switch boxes, I'm gonna power on the lighting circuits now with the two breakers. And now that the power is on to the circuits, we're gonna go test out the lights to make sure they all work. I'm here in the stairwell and behind me is the light that's on the three-way switch along with the upstairs lights. So we're gonna make sure those come on and off. Awesome, now we're gonna run down here to the other three-way switch and flip it on and off. The switch is right here, so let me hit it. Awesome. Looks like that works as well, so we know that three-way switch is good to go. Here's what the recessed lights look like at nighttime when they are all on on the upstairs, and then in the outdoor kitchen area, this is what it looked like. Turned out real nice. The primary shop lights are going to be LEDs that are going to be on these receptacles like I mentioned before. And right here is the three-way switch in which powers those receptacles. So what I'm going to do is plug in this light to temporarily check to make sure the three-way switch works correctly. So I'm gonna just plug it in right here. And then we got power, as you can see, up to that receptacle. Let me make sure the switch works. And it does. And I'm gonna be doing a detailed video in installing these shop lights. If you wanna check that out, check out video link top right hand corner of the screen where I go step by step on the installation. So let me go to the other three-way switch to make sure it works. All right, here it is. Yep, I'm over here at the other three-way switch and it is flipping the light off and on. Very good. This was a successful installation of all the receptacles and lighting in this building. If you'd like to see the video where I rough wired this whole garage, check out this video. It'll help you out.